welcome to session that is on introduction to shell architecture and the basic commands these are the learning outcomes at end of this session students will be able to describe a linux kernel architecture and the command so now before starting to the linux so we will see what is linux in the simple language the linux is an operating system we all are familiar with the other operating system such as microsoft windows apple mac os ios google android etc just like them linux is also an operating system an operating system is the software that enables communication between the computer hardware and the software it conveys input to get processed by the processor and bring output to the hardware to display it this is the basic function of an operating system next linux is was developed in the mid 90s it can be used to form a wish watches or a super computers it is everywhere in our phones laptop pcs cars and even in the refrigerators it is very much famous among the developers and the normal computer users so we'll now see the components of linux operating system as an operating system is the collection of a software each designed for the specific function linux os has the following components that is the kernel kernel modules hardware and the linux uh, operating system consist of a system software user process user utility and compilers so now we'll see what do you mean by the kernel kernel is the main heart of the operating system it is the main core of the operating system it establishes the communication between the devices and the software moreover it manages the system resources basically it has four responsibility that is a device management memory management a process management and the handling system calls so first we'll see what do you mean by the device management a system has a many device connected to it like cpu memory devices sound cards graphic cards etc a kernel stores all the data related to the devices in the device driver without this kernel won't be able to control the device thus the kernel allows what a device can do and how to manipulate it to bring out the best performance it also manages the communication between all the devices the kernel has certain rules that has to be followed by the all devices next we'll see the memory management another function that kernel has to manage is the memory management kernel keeps the track of used and unused memory and make sure that the process should not manipulate the data of each other using virtual memory address next is a process management in the process management the kernel assigns enough time and give priorities to the process before handling the cpu to other process it also deals with the security and the ownership of information next the handling system call the handling system calls means the programmer can write a query or ask the kernel to perform a task next after kernel the second most important is the system libraries a system libraries as a special program that help us in accessing the kernel features a kernel has to be triggered to perform a task and this triggering is done by the application but application must know how to place a system call because each kernel has a different sets of system calls a programmer have a develop a standard library of procedures to communicate with kernel each operating system supports these standards and these are transferred to the system calls for that the operating system most well known system library for linux is gli bc that is gnu c library next is the system tools linux os has a set of utility tools which are usually simple commands it is the software which is gnu pro project has written and published under this open source license so that the software is freely available to the everyone with the help of commands you can access your files edit manipulate the data in your directories or files 
change location or files or anything <coughs> next is the end user tool this end user tool makes a system unique for the user each tools are not required for an operating system but necessary for a user some example of the end tools are graphic design tools office suits browsers multimedia players and etc so this was about the components of the linux system next we are going to see the architecture of an linux os system so this is an architecture so architecture consists of three main levels that is hardware kernel and shell so the linux system basically works on the four layer first view in the diagram below which is showing the architecture of linux system that is an hardware so this is an hardware so the hardware consists of all physical devices attached to the system for example hard disk drive ram motherboard cpu etc next is the kernel kernel is the core component of any linux operating system which is directly interacts with the hardware next is the most important thing that is an shell command the shell is an interface which take the inputs from the user and sends the instruction to the kernel and also takes the output from the kernel and sends result back to the output shell so it uh, interacts with the user and the hardware between the shell application so the application is these are the utilities program which runs on the shell this can be a, any type of application such as web browser multimedia and the text editor so this was in the architecture of an linux system so now we'll see the basic features of an a linux operating system so why it has become so famous it has due to the multi user capability multiple users can access the same resource like memory hard disk but they have to use the different terminals to operate multitasking next the more than one function can be performed simultaneously by dividing the cpu time <coughs> next is the portability portability does not mean that it is a smaller in file size or it can be carried in the pen drive or the memory card it means it supports the different types of hardware security one of the most important thing of a linux os is what it provides the higher security than any other operating system in the world it provides the security in the three ways namely authenticating by assigning the password and the login id authorization by assigning the permission to read write and execute and encryption converts the file into the unreadable format next is a graphical user interface that is x window stream linux is a command line based os but it can be converted to a gui based on the installing package application support it has its own software repository from where the user can download and install the many applications next the file system provides hierarchical file system in which the files and the directories are arranged most important next and the one of the last thing of feature is open source linux code is freely available to all and is the community based on the development project so this were the basic features of an linux operating system now actually we are going to see the interface of an linux os that is an ubuntu so this is the terminal in which you are going to execute all the commands so it provides the security means we have to authenticate that who the system is going to be used that is the assigning the password and the login id authorization the permission to read write and the execute and next is to file to convert that is known as an encryption so one by one we will see that uh, how we are going to execute the command the basic commands using in terminal so basically uh, this is the root at you want to means the user is root here suppose if you want to make it a normal user then first will be an the different user will be locked in so next will be the root so root is what you are going to type super user and you have to type the password for that so to set the password also we have to set the sudo ea 
wd so enter new unix password that is we are going to put some password for that so password is updated now you can log in as an super user already i have logged in as an root here so in which directories you are there so to see that there is one more command to see that pwd so by say so we can understand that you are in home root one desktop now to see how many files or the directories are there on the desktop to list all the files so we have the command ls so ls means what we are going have the rahul is the directory va is the ppt so these are the two files available on the desktop here so if you want to change the directory of a linux so how we are going to change it is same like an ms dos applications like the cmd command so change directory so you can change you have come out of the you have come out from the desktop so if you do an ls now so there is no other there so we have to change go to home no such file or directory there is no such file here so these are the basic commands you have to remember how to set the password then you are going to have the uh, pwd where you are going to locate this if you want to change the directory you can change it so we'll see more basic commands in the coming lectures here so these are the my references this sir thank you